try it. I won't hurt you. if you recognize anybody out of there. Okay. No, I don't recognize anybody. Well, uh, we're going to take it into further review and uh, maybe we'll get you some more stuff to look at. No progress was made in the case for a few days. Then, on March 8th, there was the lucky break. Lois Ann's brother-in-law, Josh, noticed a car like the one Lois Ann described to the police. It was slowly driving around the streets, near where the abduction had happened. Josh wrote down the car's license plate number. On March 11th, Josh called Detective Cooley and told him what had happened. The police traced the license plate number and found that it belonged to Twala Hoffman and Ernesto Miranda. The police found Miranda and asked him to come to police headquarters to discuss a case that they were investigating. Hey man, got stuff? Yeah. Money? What you talking about, bro? Money? Oh, money! gathered a few su suspects for you to uh, try to identify. So if you just take a look at them and uh, see if any of them look familiar to you. Can y'all turn to the left? Facial structure looks similar, but I just can't tell. Mr. Miranda, detectives. I'm Detective Cooley. And this is my friend, Detective Young. You flunked the lineup, but flunked my page for my life. Lois Ann picked you out as her attacker. I'm afraid it's who. Lois Ann, doesn't get right see your eyes. Listen. You're trying to break my resolve? What's going to happen? <laughs> I'm an innocent man. Mr. Miranda, 
we can either do this the hard way or the easy way. And trust Listen, me. detectives. I'm here for one reason. That's to walk the street tomorrow. You're here for one reason, and that's to confess. <laughs> You'll walk the street when we say you will, Mr. Miranda. Now, if you're willing to answer some questions. The uh, report here says that you've been charged with petty theft, rape, and kidnapping. What do you have to say about that? Lies! <laughs> it is funny to take it, but have you ever been like this? Mr. Miranda? You have no right to treat me like this! Mr. Miranda, I advise sit you to down. sit down. Where's my door? Detective Young. And you ain't the door! Mr. Miranda, listen. Then you sit down when you're spoken to. When you don't, when you're asked to. If you haven't noticed, my friend, Detective Young here doesn't take lightly with people who don't talk. I see here that uh, you were kicked out of the army. Dishonorable discharge. What's that about? The United States of America is all a uh, lie. I figured it's like you wouldn't know that. It was like we stand for it. No, Mr. Miranda. You're the liar. You were dishonorably discharged from the army for voyeurism. Watching naked people in the shower. Like a dog you are. How'd you know that? How do you know our history? We know everything about you, Mr. Miranda. We know what you did on the night of March 3rd. Okay. You raped that one. I did. I raped her. Is that so, Mr. Miranda? You did it? Yeah, I killed me out of my own. Mr. Miranda, I'm going to need you to uh, fill out a confession, confessing that you raped and kidnapped. What were you saying? <laughs> Just a minute, sir. Sir. Officers. Detectives. Teach them a little politeness here and there. You know you really are doing the right thing. Yes, sir. I know what I did was wrong. You'll have your day too. We're glad you can cooperate with us, Mr. Miranda. Now I'm gonna have to ask you to go with me. Mr. Miranda, you are a pig, my friend. I don't want to! You're gonna have to! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm getting out of here! That's enough, little Jesse! Let's go! Oh, oh, oh. Alright, the Honorable Judge Yale McFate is now presiding in the case of the State of Arizona versus Ernesto Miranda. Well, I started walking, and I noticed this man coming towards me. That time, did you see where he came from? Yes, from the parked car. I didn't see him get out of the car. All right, you saw a man walking towards you. What happened next? I didn't pay attention because I always pass people walking on that street. I just kept walking, and finally, um, well, just... It happened so suddenly, I didn't have time to do anything. What happened? Well, he told me not to scream, that he wouldn't hurt me. Did he touch you in any way? Yes. He had my hands behind his back, one hand over my mouth, and he started pulling me towards the car. 